In today's video, I'm going to show you about kefir and how to handle it, store it, and prepare it. So let's get on with it. First of all, we're gonna need a clean surface. Doesn't need to be a marble surface, just need to be clean enough. Next, we're going to need a pitcher, could be any pitcher, a cup, just to store dirty things, a strainer, fine strainer, and the kefir itself. This kefir have left too much time for mincing and the whey have settled in the bottom. There's no problem with that, it just depends on your preference. First, let's get the kefir open. You just pull the rubber band and I get the filter out open. And there you have it. This kefir it's very firm, but that's the way I just like it. The thicker, the better. Next, you're gonna get your pitcher, your strainer, position it like this, and we are going to start pouring our kefir into the strainer to separate the yogurt from the grains. The yogurt is a bit thicker, so you're gonna need to tap it a few times to get it to pass through the strainer. There is no problem doing that. You are not hurting your kefir in any ways. Just tap it very gently. Well, as you can see, you won't be able to strain it all at once with so a small strainer. So you have to do a couple passes, tapping and pouring more, tapping and pouring even more, until you get all of the grains out from your yogurt. As you can see here, I'm almost done, so I separated and I rinse the mason jar with the yogurt I have already strained. I mix it a little bit to get every piece of grains into the mix and then I strain it up again. As you can see, it passes faster than the last couple times. And then I can get every little bit of grains from my yogurt. And this is the final result. A very fine yogurt with very little to known residue of kefir grains. At this point, some people like to wash their grains. I don't do it myself, but if you do, I must warn you something. Always use filtered water or mineral water to wash your grains. Don't use tap water in any ways, it will kill your kefir grains. This is because tap water comes with nasty things like chlorine, fluorine and some residues from treatment, so it's not good at all. The only thing left to do is to store the yogurt, so I get a plastic bottle and with the help of the pitcher, I fill it until the top. It can be then stored for at least a month without being spoiled. Now, with everything said and done, I then get the mason jar and I wash it. First, I get a true rinse to get the loose particles out from the mason jar but there is always some parts that don't come to use as easy. So I get a sponge and I finish it off. A good tip is to use the soft side of the sponge. Don't use the abrasive side. We don't want any scratches inside our jar that could cause any kind of nasty bacteria that could give off flavors or even compete and outnumber our kefir and up killing our kefir and spoiling our product. Now I get a dry towel and dry truly, making sure I don't leave any residue of tap water. It's not really obligatory, but it's a good measure, because the less nasty chemicals inside, the better. And now, with a clean mason jar, we are ready to make some more kefir. The next step is to get some milk and pour it inside the pitcher you have used to strain the grains. 
I do this is because the kefir itself still have some minuscule grains. I then get some kefir and drop it inside. I give it then a gentle mix, making sure I have catch some from the borders and I pour everything inside the mason jar. Because of the odd angle I'm behind the camera, I didn't pour it fast enough, so all of the grains have been left behind. I then just give it a little more taps to make it drop inside the mason jar. Just make sure you don't drop anything on the counter. And if it drops, well, Make sure it's clean, that's why we use a clean counter in the first place. And make sure it don't touch the border of the jar. With every grain almost there, I just give it one more rinse with some milk, making sure I mix every grain with it, and I pour it back into the jar, making sure I have almost to none residue inside the pitcher. I then set the pitcher away and I get a paper towel and give it a very well clean around the border of the mason jar. This is to make sure that the milk don't spoil around the mouth of the jar and it doesn't attract any kind of nasty bacteria. I then get a coffee filter and use it to cover the mouth. This is to prevent any kind of dust, bacteria, fungi or even insects and ants. I don't know why, but ants really like to get inside your kefir. Finally, I store it somewhere away from light, where it's dry and warm, to let it ferment. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching.